What's up guys? Today I'm going to learn you something real important. I'm going to teach you how to make your Turbo Subaru, uh, or I guess any Subaru, uh, reliable. And that way you don't have to say that Subarus are unreliable or that they're pieces of junk or whatever. So it's basically one step that you have to follow to make your Subaru reliable. Uh, and really the only thing you need to know is that you cannot. You cannot make your Turbo Subaru reliable. It's impossible. I am totally joking. So it's actually pretty simple to keep your Turbo Super reliable. Uh, behind me I have some examples on um, parts, I guess, and modifications that you can make to make it easier to make your Subaru reliable. So let's check it out! So you got a Subaru and you didn't follow any of these steps and now your engine looks something like this. You know, pretty destructive. You don't want your engine to look like this. So if your engine already looks like this, then this video is probably not for you unless you're going to rebuild it and try again. But this video is basically to prevent your engine from looking like this. Nobody wants their engine to look like this. It's really not fun. It's more of a hassle than anything. Um, I think people on social media make it seem like more fun than it is. It's really not. So I promise you don't want your engine to look like that. So the first step to prevent your engine from looking like that is to check and change your oil religiously. Uh, naturally because of their design, Subarus do use a little bit more oil than normal cars. Okay, so the first and probably the most important step um, is you want to make sure your car has oil and you want to make sure that you're changing the oil uh, consistently. You know, I think Subaru recommends something like 5,000 miles on the turbo cars, uh, which is in my opinion kind of ridiculous. If you're driving the car hard, uh, you want to do something like 3,000 miles. If you're using E85, you want to go somewhere like 1,500 to 2,000 miles. So you got to be changing it pretty often. Um, checking it even more often than that. I usually check my oil every time I put gas. So it's really easy to check your oil. Uh, there's a thing that Subaru installed direct from the dealer. You go under your hood, you find this little yellow guy. Has a little picture of an oil thing on it. You pull it out and you just make sure that you have oil and if you don't you put oil and that basically prevents your car from entirely exploding. Um, I don't really like the oils that Subaru uses at the dealership and here in my shop we stick to Motul. Uh, so Motul's line has been pretty successful for me. Um, they, This is probably the one I use the most, the XS 540 uh, and it's a good all-around oil for pretty stock cars and warmer temperature and then they also have the 300V uh, which I like to use on more built cars. This is a 530. Uh, they have several weights. It's just very expensive. Um, and then I stick to OEM oil filters. So this is an OEM blue oil filter that you can get from the dealership. They're like nine dollars. Um, I also use the JDM Tokyo Roki Blacks when I can get them. So oil, super important. Uh, another thing with oil that I see people doing a lot is using diesel oil uh, like Rotella or Dello and you know I think using diesel oil has been around as long as Turbo Subarus and really the technology behind oil has advanced so much that it's it's kind of unnecessary. Um, Rotella as well has changed their formulation to suit more efficient diesel engines uh, that are made today and it's it's just not great oil to use in your Subaru. So I know it's cheap, I know it's easy to get, but don't use it. It's just not worth it. So yeah, oil. Number one, most important, if you could do anything to your car, just make sure it has oil, make sure you're changing the oil. All right, so uh, number two, I guess would be maintenance. A lot of Subarus on the road today are older. A lot of STIs that I see uh, that people buy are older and Generally, older cars tend to have more issues. They tend to require more maintenance. So I think a lot of people just expect to buy like an STI from someone else and just expect that it was cared for and that everything's good on it. And they go and beat the car up and they blow it up. You do have to take care of these cars, especially if you buy an older car, if you buy a used car. Just assume that the person before you didn't really take care of it and kind of go through the whole thing. So one of the most important things to replace, uh, especially with an older Subaru, is the MAF sensor. 
uh, these little guys will explode your engine. I think Cobb has uh, mentioned a couple times that they won't even tune older cars um, if this has not been replaced. And the reason behind it is the little filament that detects how much air uh, is going into the motor will wear out and it'll give incorrect readings and essentially cause more air to be delivered and less fuel. It'll lean the car out and it'll blow it up. So this little piece on a lot of older Subarus is their demise. So if you buy an older Subaru, if you own an older Subaru, just replace it. Um, you won't necessarily have any codes, you won't necessarily have any symptoms. One day your car will just blow up. So map sensor, older cars, replace this guy. All right, so we talked about oil and we talked about, or I guess we touched up on maintenance, uh, the MAF sensor. You know, there's a lot more to maintaining a car than just replacing the MAF sensor. Um, most of my cars and a lot of my customer cars that are on front mounts, uh, we convert them to speed density, so we get rid of the MAF sensor entirely, and then you don't have to worry about that issue. Um, so yeah, with those out of the way, let's talk about modifications. Uh, there's a lot of modifications that you can do that improve the uh, reliability of the car. The first one is an air oil separator. Um, so Subaru's factory PCV system basically takes uh, crankcase pressure and you know that has a lot of oil vapor and other nasty stuff and it redirects it to the intake track. So basically, or actually I can I can show you. So basically what happens is the crankcase is venting from both sides of the valve covers, uh, the center of the engine, and it goes directly into the intake track. So it coats the intercooler in oil, coats the intake manifold in oil, and then it goes into the motor where it's burned. So a couple reasons that's bad. Uh, one is you're going to be consuming oil. Uh, when your car consumes oil, you know, that's where you end up with low oil or no oil and your car blows up. Uh, two, oil in the intake manifold reduces the cooling efficiency and oil getting burned and creating carbon deposits causes detonation. So, you know, you want to get an air oil separator. Uh, the unit I prefer is the IAG unit. This is a custom IAG comp unit off of this car here. Uh, this unit's cool because it doesn't redirect the crankcase vapors back to the intake track like a lot of other units. Uh, this one vents it to atmosphere so it gets rid of them entirely. So it's got cooling ports on the top and bottom to prevent condensation and the oil that gets filtered out of the vapor is, is basically sent back to the motor so you're not uh, getting rid of it entirely like a catch can uh, or like the factory Subaru system. They also sell a sport model of this which redirects to the intake track and is, is a little bit better for cars that are on E85 or uh, stockish cars. So air oil separator, best bang for buck modification, um, absolute necessity on a turbo Subaru. Alright, so air oil separator out of the way. Next thing you want to get is a tune. Um, there's a lot of ways to tune your car and there's tons of reputable tuners all around the country So it's it's really easy to find someone to tune your car um, But yeah, I see a lot of cars come in with intakes, you know simple mods intake exhaust uh, catless exhaust and You know most people are under the impression that you don't need a tune for these parts um, Well, you do uh, a lot of aftermarket intakes will cause the car to run lean and that'll blow up your car really quickly so Find yourself a tuner, get yourself a tune. Um, there's a lot of really cool tuners on the market. Cobb makes one, the access port. This is probably the most common Subaru modification ever made. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the maps that are preloaded onto this that people use, but it's an awesome way to see how your car is doing. It displays six different functions. You can have six different gauges on here and it just kind of gives you a good idea of the health of your car. So, access port, uh, these are the best, the V3. Don't go find yourself like a used V1, you know, this thing is like a brick. Um, it's super outdated, but I, I do know people that still use these and people that use the V2. Uh, just get a V3, it's, it's definitely worth the upgrade. Uh, or, you know, you can just get a Game Boy Color and tune your car with this and it'll blow up for sure because this is just a 
regular Game Boy Color. So, yeah. Find a tuner, get an access port, get an open source tune. Whenever you put parts on your car, tune it again. Uh, super important. Alright, so we basically just touched on the most important things to keep your Subaru, or Turbo Subaru, or really just any turbo car healthy and happy for a long time. Um, with these parts, you know, air oil separator, uh, keeping up on your oil, keeping up on your maintenance, a good tune, especially if you have aftermarket parts, your, your Subaru should run relatively problem free for a long time. Um, so now I'm just going to touch on some performance parts that will not only benefit the performance of the car, uh, but will also in some way make it a little more reliable. Alright, so the first modification that you can do um, is a fuel system. Subaru's fuel system isn't the greatest, especially once you want to start making some power. Uh, so we make a lot of fuel systems in-house um, to essentially eliminate any problems that are caused by the factory. Uh, Subaru fuel system. So one of the first mods people do is a fuel pump. You know, I like these AEM units. They're E85 compatible. Uh, they work really well. So you get yourself a fuel pump. Um, you also want to get a fuel pump hardwire kit. The Subaru factory wiring is kind of prone to overheating uh, with a lot of load on it. And when the wiring overheats, the fuel pump stops working. So these guys are cheap, like $35 or something. Fuel pump hardwire basically ensures that 12 volts is constantly going to your fuel pump so you don't run into any issues there. Super important. Next is uh, lines, rails, and injectors. Um, I prefer the Teflon coated PTFE line. Uh, works really well with alternative fuels, E85, you know, nice swivel fittings. Uh, and it doesn't sweat like other lines I've used, so you don't really get any smell. Uh, fuel smell coming from the lines. Um, we have our own fuel systems coming out pretty soon. So we got these rails in a couple different colors. You know, super, super nice stuff. Uh, and then some injector dynamics, injectors. Um, you know, don't really put the biggest injector on if you're running like a stock car. Um, get, in, get in touch with a shop, get in touch with your tuner, and find out what injectors will work best for your build. There's a lot of different options, and smaller injectors might work better for some people than others. So you got yourself a pretty snazzy fuel system, and now you can put your car on E85, uh, which also helps slightly with the reliability. Um, you know, got all kinds of good stuff to make your car more reliable. So now, uh, pretty much all that's left is to upgrade the motor, um, and a lot of things that people will do is put head studs on it, so you won't lift heads, blow head gaskets, whatever. Super easy, uh, pretty cheap, and I'd say a good mod for reliability. Um, you could even take it a step further when the motor is out getting head studs and you know put some drop-in pistons in it and not have to worry about the ringland problems or whatever else. These are Manley's, uh, probably my personal favorite in the shop. Super nice, super high quality. But yeah, so that's just a couple things that will keep your car a little more reliable and keep you happy because your car is not in the shop blown up, you know, having to have thousands of dollars of work to it. So hope you enjoy. Uh, check me out on Instagram, AWD Pat, modified AWD, and uh, subscribe. Check out more videos. See you guys later.